What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video, guys, I'm going to be going over last round, how I fared, who starred for me, who let me down, and then the pressing issues going into round seven. Enjoy the video, guys. Straight into it, guys. This week, I managed to score 22-44, which was pretty respectable. I had a couple players that let me down, but for the most part, my team was pretty solid. Started off on Friday night, McRae VC, 159. Absolute piglet. A couple of the other guys that went big for me, we had Andy Brayshaw, so he pulled through with 121 I thought he was going to get attention from Kane Turner and from what we'd seen in previous weeks where he'd gotten tagged, I thought that a 60 or a 70 could be on the cards. So it was great to see him pump out 120. We also had Sam Doherty who scored 126. He's been solid this year, but he hadn't shown that big ceiling score that we'd seen in previous years. So it was good to see him go big and show that he's still got that level in him. And then, whilst I had plenty of other guys score well, the big one for me this week was Darcy Parrish. My boy pulled through big with 150. I've been praising him for the last few weeks about how he's going well and that role's there and he's got that big score around the corner. And we saw it this week, 42 disposals, two goals. And an absolute huge score. So at 2% ownership, that was huge for me this week. A couple guys that let me down. We had Jaden Short, who scored 75. Back-to-back -back 70s now. And it doesn't look great with Hawley in the side. But at the same time, the way in which those last two games have been played, it hasn't been great conditions for him to go well. So I'm still confident he can be... Decent this year, but he doesn't look to be a top six defender at this point. The other two negatives I had, I don't like giving my negative threes to rookies, but I did have Jackson McRae and Jay Rantel on the field. Unfortunately, both these boys scored in the 20s. Not great, not what you want to see, and essentially prevented me from having a big round this week. Nathan Buckley... Lack of midfielders, you'd think that he'd give these kids an opportunity, throw them in the middle. He's played Thomas and Brown in the centre instead, so obviously got no clue. He's probably scared of losing his job, and rightly so. Collingwood have been terrible this year. Hopefully he gives these kids another chance and plays them in a role where they're suited. Jay Rantau, for example, spent all his time inside forward 50, the kid's strength are through the middle, so give him a go through the middle, Buckley, you wanker. As I stated, I scored 22-44 this week, and as a result, I've moved up 2,000 places, so my current rank's 13-14. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm in a good position, um, and my team value's at 15.68 mil. So not ideal, and it's not at where the top level teams are. And there's a couple reasons for this, which I'll touch on later in the video, but I did make a couple mistakes with my trades this round. Going over some of the pressing issues going into next week, there's a lot of coaches out there that have Josh Dunkley. So the popular move is to go to Jack Zebel, and I'm just going to spend a couple minutes explaining to you guys why I don't think this is a great option. Zebul has looked fantastic at halfback. He's getting the chip mark. He's taking the kick-ins and he showed he's got a super high ceiling this year. He's averaging 119. So the reason why I don't like Zebul too much is he's fully priced. He comes in priced at 111 now and... 
He's never averaged over 95 in his career before. So while he has had a different role change this year, which has been conducive to scoring more fantasy points, going long term, I just can't see him keeping it up. I think that while he has been scoring a lot and getting a lot of the footy in defense, he's made a lot of errors. He's turned the footy over and his opponents have been kicking lots of goals on him. So I think when North get Aaron Hall back, um, they could potentially look at some other defensive options. Commentators over the last few weeks have been talking about getting him up into the midfield, using his leadership around up around the footy a bit more. I don't know if North will look at this as an option, but it's got to be something that's floating around within their ecosystem. He also has a super long injury history, and that can't be great. We're seeing lots of players get injured with the reduced rotations. He's got to be in for a rest at some point, potentially. And if you're paying that much for him, you want a guy who's stable, who's going to score 110 to 120 every week for you for the rest of the year. And I just don't think that Jack Zebel is that guy. I think that at that price, he's missed the boat and there's better options around. So, for example, I quite like Steel Sidebottom. He looks to be back into the midfield now. He's had some games under his belt. He looks like he's back to his best and he pumped out 130 on the weekend. He's primed for the picking. He has a nice matchup against Gold Coast this round. It also saves you another 60k from going to Jack Zebel. So I like him more. I like Nat Fife more. I think some of these guys, they give you more cash. And we're seeing that these rookies on the field are scoring poorly. And the priority needs to be to get them off the field as quick as possible. So getting a cheaper guy in the forward as a Dunkley replacement can give you some cash which can go towards an upgrade, whereas Zebul is essentially a straight sideways move and it doesn't give you any money to work with going forward into the future. I think that if you want to go for a straight swap type, you've got to be chasing a big midfielder like a Clayton Oliver, for example, someone that's proven, someone that you know is going to be top quality for the whole season. Finding a Josh Dunkley replacement is obviously going to be a big talked about issue this round, guys. So I'll spend a bit of time through the week in some articles, in some other videos, outlining some potential options for you in a bit more depth. As I stated at the start of the video, I did make a couple mistakes with my trades this week. And while I'm not disappointed points wise, I'm disappointed in the choices that I made and potentially some of the thought processes that went through my head this week. So I ended up trading Errol Goulden to Tom Mitchell. And then with my second trade, I ended up opting to go for Jay Rantau, who I thought would get more opportunity and have a pretty high scoring ability. My original trades, I'd gone with Dyson Heppel and Miles Bergman. So I lost out on 40 points there, but I also lost out on the cash generation of Bergman. And I just wanted to touch on that quickly. I think looking at some of the top sides and their team value and where their sides at, I should have opted to chase some of these good rookies last week, such as Jai Farrar, Miles Bergman, potentially a Devin Robertson. These types that look like quality players this year, rookies, they're hard to come by. And so I think I should have probably got on some of these guys. They look like they're going to be around for a while and generate that cash. This week, I'll probably be looking to bring in one or two of these types, potentially fix up my bench and try and get some more cash generation because I'm limited in cash generation so far. My bench isn't looking that great and I need to be able to get more money in order to get these upgrades going forward. So not having Dunkley, not having any forced trades as of yet, that's probably going to be my priority this week. And I don't like doing double downgrades, but I need to get my bench sorted, especially going into the buyers. I need to get set for that. I need to have good structure 
and I need to make sure my team's in a good position long term. I don't tend to do these round review video guys as I'm not sure how valuable they are to you. So if you guys like to see me talk about my team, talk about how my trades went, where I'm ranked, how I scored for the round, etc., let me know below. Give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content and jump in the comments and let me know your thoughts on Jack Zabel. It's obviously going to be a huge talking point this week. A lot of players are going to jump on board and chase him. So I want to hear your comments, your thoughts, and if you're going to get him or not. As always, thank you for watching the video, guys. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school.